My name's Samuel Boone and uh, I'm the manager of Signet Breeding Services and I'm going to be talking about creating a breeding plan for your sheep and beef enterprise. There's a much wider document that's available on the Signet website. This just touches on a few elements of creating a breeding plan. So there are a few steps to go through in creating the plan. The first is to review your current enterprise. So think about your strengths and your weaknesses, assess the KPIs for the enterprise and then define the market that you're breeding for in the future. What is it that your buyers are going to want in the future? Set some breeding objectives, both for the breeding females within the herd and also the slaughter generation. Assess your current genetic resources, which just means think about the ewes and the uh, cows that you have in the herd at the moment and how you may want those genetics to change in the future. Uh, think about the constraints on your system in terms of land, forage, health, labour availability. What are the, uh, the constraints in which you're working in? Consider then how best to change the genetics in your enterprise. Is that through within breed selection, uh, using a different breed through cross breeding, or is it through selecting within the herd or flock? Think about how these changes are going to be introduced. Uh, and then finally, develop a strategy to monitor change over time to see how successful your breeding plan has been. So we're going to think about setting breeding objectives and there's a whole number of attributes that we can change within our enterprise. The first thing we want to decide is what priority to give to these. So think about the things that will make you the most money. Equally think about those things that are going to save you money or make the enterprise run more efficiently. But in addition to those economic drivers, we also need to be thinking about attributes that reduce environmental impact of our systems, make life easier. Uh, if it's going to reduce the labour input uh, on your system and also things that will improve the welfare of your animals. So there's a whole number of breeding objectives that we can be thinking about. Next think about whether it's actually the genetics or the environment that needs to change. For a number of traits a uh, much faster improvement would be gained by simply changing the nutrition or the health status within the herd or the enterprise and that's absolutely fine. However, long term, the ceiling on performance, once you've sorted out all your health and your nutrition, is always going to be governed by the genetics of the enterprise. So then it's uh, is the time to think more closely about the genetic merit of your animals. Next, we need to think about where we want these genes to be expressed. So within the slaughter generation, we want them to be born easily, grow fast and uh, have superior carcass attributes. Within the uh, maternal breeding line, we have different objectives. We want them to have good milk and maternal care, good fertility, good longevity. And I would suggest an optimum mature size is also important to think about. So you can see there's a bit of an antagonism there between wanting very fast growing progeny and then maybe not wanting massive cows and ewes on our breeding enterprise. So that needs consideration. There are a whole range of estimated breeding values that are available to help us to select the very best animals within any given breed. And I'm not going to go into these in great detail, but suffice to say that when purchasing bulls or rams, there's lots of information that will help you uh, to get the animals with the right traits that you're interested in. In addition, just a, a quick word to mention, there might be major genes of interest. So, for example, if you're interested in polling your cattle, then actually a single gene can have quite a big impact. And there are some gene tests that the seller might be able to do to tell you whether your animals possess those genes. So there's lots of information out there on which to make selection decisions. But we should also think about crossbreeding as an approach and we do it very successfully within the UK, whether it's crossbred hill ewes or crossbred cows coming out of the dairy enterprise. And this is because we make really good use of hybrid vigour. Now hybrid vigour is the increase in performance that we get above the mid parent value. So cross two breeds together, you expect them to perform halfway between both parents. The extra performance that you get is that element to, of hybrid vigour. And we see it very widely within our industries. The pig and poultry industry make very wide use of crossbred maternal females. 
And it's important to think which traits are most impacted by hybrid vigor. So here you can see a column that shows you the heritability of traits, the degree to which the variation that you see between animals is influenced by their genetics. And also you can see the degree to which they're influenced by hybrid vigor. And you can see a number of traits of importance to us actually have quite a low heritability. They're hard to improve through selective breeding. Uh, those would be traits like fertility and longevity uh, and, and uh, early lamb and calf survival. However, hybrid vigor has a massive impact on them. So if these are traits that have concern within your enterprise, then actually bringing in another breed might be a way to create the greatest lift in, in performance. There are a few considerations if you're thinking about whether to pure or crossbreed. Obviously with purebreds it's a very simple system, one breed required. You've got some marketing advantages there with purebred sales and obviously much greater uniformity amongst the breeding stock. Through crossbreeding you've got the ability to capitalise on hybrid vigour and you've got the ability to make much faster rates of genetic change because you can effectively use any sheep uh, that's out there as opposed to just the very best within a given breed. So there are lots of crossbreeding strategies that are available but not all of them are suitable to the UK because uh, some of them are only suitable if you have an absolutely massive enterprise but for slightly smaller enterprises these ones would work quite well. The two breed cross is simply the cross between two purebreds and so all the hybrid vigour is expressed within the progeny so that's absolutely fine for producing a slaughter generation clearly you need to, to have a steady source of uh, female replacements that are coming in uh, through another strategy. Rotational cross would mean splitting the herd or the flock this, these can apply to either sheep or cattle all of these examples we've used cattle here uh, putting one breed to half of them one breed to the other and then as the female replacements are produced they then go back to the uh, bull of the other breed. So over time, over a series of generations, you end up with crossbred cows that are roughly a third to two thirds of either breed uh, and obviously using purebred bulls uh, over the top. So you have crossbred cows and crossbred calves. Terminal sire cross, so that's where we use a terminal sire male uh, quite often over a crossbred cow and so you have a crossbred cow and crossbred progeny. And if there are three different breeds involved, then you've actually got the maximum hybrid vigour possible. Um, but you do need to consider where your crossbred females are going to be coming from. And we use that a lot in the UK, whether that's uh, Frisian cross cows coming out of the dairy industry or whether it's mule ewes coming off the hill. And we use that very successfully. Composite breeding is where we have a whole range of different breeds that are crossed together and then crossed again. And then over time, those crosses can be crossed with themselves. And if it was a closed breeding program, eventually the hybrid vigor would reduce over time uh, as those crosses um, stabilize out. However, in reality, many composite breeding programs remain open. So uh, new purebreds are constantly being put in uh, and are working their way through to the uh, generation that's being sold and produced. So you've got quite a bit of hybrid vigor being locked in and quite a flexible approach to breed. In addition to that, you've got back crossing. So this would be something that you might use if you just want to give a breed a lift and maybe uh, just introduce a few new genes from another breed, but then you cross back. So we've got breed A cross to breed B, but then we cross back to breed B for several generations and you end up with cows that are 80 to 90% of the original breed but with a small amount of new genetics uh, going into their makeup. So if you were trying to introduce polling into a horned breed, this would be an excellent way to do it, for example. So that's a, a system of back crossing. Next, we need to think about whether to buy in uh, or to, to breed our own. So there are obviously pros and cons for both uh, in, in terms of uh, the economics of the approach. Obviously, if you breed your own, then you can control the genetics, um, but it takes up a lot of resources in terms of land and labor. But there is the added advantage that you've got greater control over the health status uh, of animals within the enterprise. So finally, uh, 
once you've got your plan in place, I would suggest doing some recording as you go along. This will aid the selection of replacements uh, and it will also identify breeding females that aren't doing the job that you want to drop from the main uh, breeding herd, maybe put to a terminal sire or, or sell on. It also enables you to monitor the enterprise over time, so to see whether your plan has been successful. And there'll be a number of companies providing farm software that would help you quite easily do all of these things, uh, linking into the electronic identification uh, within the ear tags. So to summarise, uh, assess your enterprise resources. What are the things that you do well? What are the things that you want to improve over time? Uh, set some breeding objectives. Think about the things that are best improved through genetics and then think about how you're going to change those through genetics, whether it's selecting within a breed using EBVs, whether it's bringing a new breed in through crossbreeding or whether it's simply selecting uh, on the farm to bring the best genetics uh, through. And then finally, record um, how your program is going uh, so that you can monitor it over time to see if you've been successful and to ensure that the traits are changing in the right direction. And in wanting more information, do head to the Signet website uh, where you'll see further notes available on breeding strategies.